um, a, a group of people, predominantly uh, left Green Party members, some, some Labour members, who have put on an event, an event uh, to uh, tell, tell the people of Bolton that we don't. So we've got to ask them who, who they're representing and you know, what it's all about, why they keep trying to put this kind of thing down, down our throat and tell us that you know, we, we must have, um, that we must stay in the, in, in the European Union. Right, can I just ask you a couple of questions? Right, so in the past you've campaigned with some of these people on issues like bedroom tax and uh, you know, things to do with council tax and various other bits and bobs, I take it, yeah? So, you do actually know many of these people. So I know many of these people and, um, you know, as a, as a, a, a left-leaning person myself, I've, I've campaigned for uh, um, many of these uh, social injustices like the bedroom tax and uh, against poverty and austerity and things like that. But the left has become so extreme now that, you know, these are um, extreme left people who if you try and uh, uh, question anything or speak out about things or have a, 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 a rational conversation with them, you're automatically branded uh, a right-wing neo-Nazi, uh, you're branded a racist just for asking, so, asking questions. So just, just a question here, right, so did these people turn on you at the point that they realised you were a Brexiteer? Uh, the vast majority of them, yes. So when, when I was campaigning out in, in the, on the streets of Bolton, uh, online and uh, out in the community for Brexit and putting my argument forward, a lot of the people um, started to, to turn on me, uh, unfriend me, say that I was a racist, that I was a right-wing um, extremist. Uh, some of them even said that I was a terrorist. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, wow. it's, uh, and this it, is all because you spoke out against uh, the leaving the EU? Because I, because I highlighted the issues and concerns that I had with the EU and uh, put a few facts on the table and uh, also exercised my democratic right to, uh, to leave the, the European Union. Okay, uh, do you think that, well in your own opinion, do you think that having the yellow vest is a... How would I explain that? Having the, wearing the yellow vest, does that give you cause to pursue uh, your own your own views on why you left? Is it the reason behind wearing a yellow vest that made you want to leave the EU uh, because of corruption, because of everything that was going on, or was it because of your own uh, nationalist views on why you want to? I think that's what I'm getting at. Like from the right, right point of view, the whole thing about nationalism, about racism, that would be a very uh, poignant uh, thing to say and a reason why you'd want to leave. But you have people over there that are obviously they're they're from different sectors of society. They are they're from the Green Party, uh, from the Labour Party, these are all left-wing associated kinds of people who want that to stay in the EU because of uh, what they've been told perhaps, uh, but from a right-wing right point of view, which I am a conservative point, uh, is it not better to have nationalism, to keep your own sovereign identity? instead of selling it out to, to the likes of Donald Tusk, to uh, Jean-Claude Juncker? Absolutely, yeah. So, um, in answer to your question, the first part, uh, the, for me, the yellow vest is, is unity. It represents unity against the establishment. And there's no left or right? There's, there's no, no left or right, no. There's no polarisation. Uh, yeah. For me, there's no polarisation in, in, in the yellow vest. It's a fight for freedom and justice against the elites and against the establishment. and Against corruption. Uh, and against corruption. And I, and, I, and I do think and I do feel that um, it is important to stand with the people united uh, on a united front 
against you know all the, the wrongs in the world again, which are being created by the establishment and part of that is the European Union taking our identity away from us uh, imposing regulations and rules on us uh, in, in, not, not only um, in, in a way that, that um, violates our sovereignty but also in, in, a, in a very undemocratic way so people uh, have heard arguments well saying well if you're not part of the European Union then you know you, you can't make you can't make legislation and, and have a say in it uh, absolute rubbish that if what happens in the European Union the way that it works is is unelected bureaucrats come up with uh, proposals uh, for legislation and then and then give that to the European Parliament to vote on. So the European Parliament isn't actually creating any legislation at all. No, uh, what they're not. doing is just uh, saying yes or no to somebody else's pr proposal. Well, from a, from a libertarian perspective, I see that as really authoritarian. Yeah, when you have unelected officials uh, basically making rules for people whilst. Everybody. Yeah, so I mean, if I, if I vote for an MEP, yeah, I expect that MEP to actually have real power to create laws, but actually yeah. they don't. What, what, like, like Damien just said a minute ago, now, from a point of view of liberty, I find that, uh, I find that a scary proposition that, the, that somebody who's unelected, like Donald Tusk or Jean-Claude Juncker or Michelle Barnier, can actually make a decision for any of us. I mean, it really is a scary, scary thought, yeah. But um, I think this is where like, people like Damien on the left and Alex on the right and myself as a libertarian, we can actually agree that that kind of corruption needs to be stamped out, yeah? So to assume that there isn't any common ground between the left, the right and the centre on this is, is well, uh, foolhardy at first well, by the extreme leftists. Okay, so we've got a, a libertarian, we've got a lefty and me on, me on the right. No, you can't get any better from society, right? <laughs> you got to have a an equal, uh, well-rounded argument. Now, you can't just be biased towards one. You have to take in other people's points of view, and you have absolutely right. And you have to come to some an agreement on the issues that are actually we are facing today as a. Not just here in Bolton, but UK-wide, uh, you have... Uh, well, that's how democracy should work, isn't well, it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's put there to, to, to settle those differences between different points of view. Yeah. yeah? Uh, if we start to ignore that, we're on, we're on dangerous territory. I wouldn't think of ignoring a right-wing perspective or a left-wing perspective because I'd prefer to have a situation where... Uh, where there's discourse between all of us and we can actually solve problems rather than argue with each other and become really polarised to an almost dangerous degree. I mean, I don't know if that's something you could agree on as a, as a right winger. But Times have changed and if we don't change with them, unfortunately, I see ourselves getting left behind. Um, we're losing our freedom. We're losing our freedom. I think uh, it's it's very much what the yellow vest represents is is that unity is about voicing our concerns against the people that are doing our country, our, uh, doing your own people. Uh, so you see it as injustice. a justice. So you see it as a fight for liberty and freedom. Uh, Individual the yellow vest. Yeah. Absolutely. I would absolutely and, agree. With and that. would you agree with that, Damien? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So. This, uh, uh, this morning I was watching a, a live stream uh, of uh, the French people protesting against uh, Macron, the Yellow Vest uh, movement, which is where all of this has, uh, has, has kind of stemmed from, or initiated from. And I saw a great big banner which, which a number of people were holding, and it was calling for a, 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 a Frexit referendum. Uh, so the French people, and I've seen uh, are asking for a, um, a referendum as well. So I've seen we've seen it in Greece, we've seen it in Italy, we've seen it in France, we've seen it in uh, Spain. Well, this this seems to be a common theme. It's not. Just, I wouldn't just say it's just about Frexit or Brexit or anything. What I'm seeing right the way across Europe at the moment is a big move towards people wanting to be able to trigger referendums themselves yes, through yes. 
through the means like petitions and stuff like that. So like the Rick movement in France or or uh, that, that in itself is being um, yeah, it's been sabotaged and hijacked. By Can you just explain Roman what the Rick movement is for right. us? Alex? So yeah. the Rick movement is the uh, referendum the initiated by citizens. By the citizens, that's correct. And uh, the whole point behind it is that you have. Um, everyday people making decisions on, on uh, laws and policies that the government make. However, it's, it's people like Roman Light that are using that as a political gain and as a, for his own uh, charterism uh, ideologies, his own charterism beliefs, where the whole Rick movement is it's losing cause. But anyway, yeah, Ger so Jerome Rodriguez on a different side of things in France right. is also asking for direct democracy as well, yeah? Uh, and in previous videos, Damien's mentioned that he wants uh, direct democracy and myself as a libertarian, I've always supported direct democracy. I think that's what, that's one of the things that we're calling for, you know, with the, the European Union, uh, even the British government, and individual uh, sovereign states are not democratic at all in, in the slightest and we keep going on uh, as a society that we're a democratic society and we keep saying how we have the best democratic uh, systems in the world but it's actually not true we, we, we uh, first of all the, the kind of system we have first past the post system isn't really representative of how people, how people vote and then when people are elected then the politicians that they've uh, elected suddenly switch off and disengage with the people and make all the decisions for them so the, the, there is no real democracy there and what many of these people want including myself and you guys and uh, um, a lot of people across uh, across mainland Europe and uh, particularly the Yellow Vest movement and from all political spheres from as all well political spheres, they want a true direct democracy. They want to have a say on what happens in their lives. You know, how, how in, society... Okay. And that fact, right. So, in your own opinion, what would be the best course of action to take to come to an agreement with all parties on a movement like this? Uh, something along the lines of uh, what the rec has uh, well, being generated what, what, what we've got at the moment France. is uh, um, we've got the technology to implement. You know, we, we're 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 now in an age where we can implement almost anything uh, in terms of uh, controlling democracy. So we can use smartphones, tablets. Uh, we can open up libraries. We can put computers in. We've got uh, um, uh, you know. Access Are we going to get internet. onto blockchain democracy here? With and this what kind we can do, we can use. <laughs> That, tech, that, that access to technology to, to, to instantly vote on things and using infallible technologies like uh, blockchain technologies as you mentioned James. Well if you think about it, we all vote every day anyway, don't we? Yeah, because it, it, every time you click like on a video on YouTube, you kind of put in a vote for it. If you, like, if you press dislike, you put a vote up for it. And the same thing happens on Facebook and I mean, yeah, I take it you do actually use those functions on those things, yeah? Yeah, so, yeah. I, you know, I use social media and if you know, I dislike something, I put a, an angry face or a sad face, depending on what it so is. You, Alex, like it. So you, Alex, as well. We are, you're right, we are, we are voting and we can but use it, But they're, non, they're non-meaningful votes, yeah, yeah non right? All they are is just an indication or a poll, yeah, but what you're saying really is that that ability to have the power to actually make our, our will uh, have more meaning is is there now i mean i'm i'm in the camp that uh basically thinks that referendums should be triggered by a petition chair yeah? uh, and the uh, old laws can be destroyed if they need to be and new laws can be vetted through uh petitioning if people don't like them uh, and, and that we can actually trigger referendums on any new law that's that's been created so long as it's done through petition now would you agree with that on the left yeah i think uh, that's that's one good way of doing it so we can uh, launch a petition or um, counteract a piece of legislation with a, a petition and then it can go out to a wider audience and we can have a referendum and do you petition. think there should be implications on politicians who don't carry out the will of the people then if that's yeah, the case absolutely but with that kind of system um, if it's 
just across the board, we don't actually need politicians to represent us, we just need an administration. Uh, so we have a, a set of administrators that are making sure uh, within the parameters that we've allowed them to that this thing happens and uh, you know ensures that the, the civil service uh, so is coordinated. So is separate to politicians or...? Yeah, we don't actually need... Well, if, we, if we use technology... Are you saying that we don't need politicians if we right, have yeah. something like yeah. this? We just need, a, we just need an administration. Hmm. You, have, you have Ramona's, you have... Uh, even even uh, minister, ministers in, in parliament saying that they want a second referendum. Look, there's 29th of March, we're on in February now. There's like less, there's about 35 odd days until uh, we leave the EU. There's no chance in hell that in this kind of system that they will get a second referendum. There's just no chance. And I think that. Uh, Mrs. May's uh, my deal or no deal situation is going to end badly. Um, I think that the whole this is the problem with with politicians is they just they go round and round in circles until it gets to the point where it's their it's their um, plan or well, no plan. Yeah, it's and, just and their and will, not the people's wrong. will. It is wrong, absolutely. So we're here today to, um, you know, to just question why these groups, these left, extreme left groups now, which have become, you know, become extreme left groups, are telling the people of Bolton that uh, we've had enough of Bre this Brexit idea, and you know the people don't want it. When in fact, as I, as I pointed out earlier on, fifth, the, the, the vote was cast, the referendum was cast, and 58.3% of the people of Bolton said we want to leave. Shall we uh, go and speak to the, the, yes, the people? Guys, speak let's, to them. let's ask them. Let's ask them what it, it's all about. So, just for the viewers, what what are we actually? Where are we going now? What are we actually doing? So we're in, we're in Bolton Town Centre, across from the, the town hall, and there's a, a, an event on today. A group of people, uh, a group of people, have said that they um, they, they, they want to basically stop Brexit in Bolton, you know, they, they want the, they, they're representing the Bolton people and they want to stop Brexit and uh, the people of Bolton don't want Brexit, but as I said before, the people of Bolton voted overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly in the referendum for uh, Brexit to leave the European Union and it was a 70% turnout in the, on, um, on the day of the referendum in Bolton and the electorate 50 58.3% of them voted to leave the European Union. So it's very clear to me that it's completely the opposite of what these guys are, are saying. Hi guys. Hey, all right. Chile, so we just want to ask some questions, actually. So we've seen, yeah, really on, we've seen yeah, online. Are you Chile, Jones? Uh, yes, yes. So we've seen, we've seen online that people um, uh, the, this group of people here and uh, so on uh, saying that the, the, vote, the people of Bolton didn't want Brexit, but in fact, uh, 58.3% of, of the people that voted in Bolton voted to leave yes. the European Union. Yeah. 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 Well, I've changed my mind. Who, who's changing no, the mind? Yeah. No. Who is changing Lots the mind? Of, because people have. Well, who, where, where are these figures? We keep seeing evidence of it. Where, 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 there's no evidence. Is that, the the is that is, is not well, if you just look at, I, I'm not. Uh, can, we, can we just explain a couple of things, right? So what we're doing, we're explaining. Right. Well, uh, no, we'll explain. Right. We're doing, we're doing a YouTube channel. Yeah. Right. I'll, expl I'll, expl I'll explain now. Right. So what we've got, we've got, a lot, we've got a lot in in the public. Yeah. about what their views are so you're you're getting a bit in the way of what we're trying to well, do. We're, 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 we're so you you so right basically do you believe that the eu is a proper democracy yes the laws in the eu are done simply by the heads of the 28 governments getting together and say we want to have a rule on this so they ask the commission to write it the commission comes Don't up with a draft pass. Yeah? yeah, to write it. It then goes back to the European Council, which is the heads of the governments. They look at it and say, oh, that's not quite right, we want it this way. So they send it back, it gets changed. When they agree it, it then goes to the European Parliament to be voted on, and the same thing happens again. I find that very anti-democratic. That's, that's how myself. it is. 
That's how it is. Yeah, but I find they're, that really anti-democratic. No way. They're all elected, these people. So removed they're, from the people yeah, on the ground. Yeah, in, in I agree. Yeah. Yes, yes. So but removed. I want to change that. Yeah. Right now, hang on. Let me finish. So you've got 28 prime ministers. You've got 600 odd MEPs that we vote for. Those are all elected. When they've passed it, it goes to the national parliament that we've all voted for in our countries, and they vote on it and pass it eventually. What happens? That, what happens if you have MEPs who don't follow the will of the people? But what is the will of the people? It changes all the time. I would say the will of the people is what they vote for in referendums generally. Um, that referendum was two and a half years ago. I'd like to leave the European Union. Well, that's fine. I'd like to stay. That's two different people in the same country. It is. <laughs> but, the majority, but the majority, and this is the whole idea of a vote. democracy, yeah. that, uh, it was a, it was a, 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 a but I think it's unsafe. Turn, and the majority of it, is, it is unsafe to vote against something. It's far safer to vote for something. The Brexit vote was a vote I, against. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily vote. agree for that. You wouldn't vote for Hitler, would you? Yeah, but the, vote, the Brexit vote was a vote against the EU, not a vote for a And that's exactly what the people wanted. Yeah, but the people have various different versions of Brexit they'd like to see, and it's obvious. No, 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 they, vote, they didn't vote for various different options, they voted no, I know to they leave the European Union. Yeah. So what, May what, what form of Brexit, Brexit do you want then? I don't want one. You don't want a Brexit no, at all? No. That's fine. On the ballot paper, you'd have no Brexit at all. You could have Mrs. May's deal. You could have no so, deal. So, and people in would effect, decide. Really, what it's becoming is is the option to reverse the referendum. If, if oh, you put no yes, Brexit as one, at all, as one, and also so, the option to say which form of Brexit so, you would like all right, instead. So, so you started the conversation saying people would have a democratic choice to to uh, decide which kind of Brexit they wanted, but now you've. you've Added into I, the mix. No, that, I, no oh, I said all the way through. You don't want I said to. all the way through. They the would also would have an option. If you, if you don't want to have one, then of that's fine. So that, in effect, is 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 nullifying the referendum. Season. No, it's not. It's, it's not. That referendum no. is void. The referendum and started you can the process, can... and it allowed the government to go out and discuss how they could possibly leave. <laughs> you're, you're heading to anarchy, not a solution. Uh, no, we're, uh, I'm sorry, fighting for liberty. Yeah, the Chinajun is actually an anarchist movement. No, I would say it's a movement it's direct a democracy. It's an anti angry, it's it's an anti establishment. You're not an angry person, I can tell it's it. It's an anti establishment. Yes. Anti corruption. Yes. Yeah, but anti -corruption. what is the establishment? That's the thing, right? Well, I think doing this is really kicking the establishment in the teeth. They don't want this. In the UK, you have a few people that have power. This breaks it. The problem, the, the problem that you've got, though, is that in the European Union, you've got a few people who have power. So what we're doing is we're just moving from one Because we have a system at the moment that was set up many years ago to be just economics. And gradually it's moving out of that and getting more things on. The system is not fit for purpose. It's changing, I agree. But not back to nation states, because that's not Hello. I mean, uh, I didn't vote in the referendum, by the way, but uh, I do respect democracy, absolutely, and I think all the games that have been played by politicians since then are very disturbing. I think they're playing fire with democracy, and, and you really, the second you start to disrespect democracy, you're going to run into some serious problems. Would you agree with that? Listen, the people of Europe have, been, have spoken so many times. The French said no. The Irish said no. The Danes said no. And what happened? They all voted incorrectly. It's a bit like one of these crazy African dictatorships where the president doesn't get his job, but do not worry, my police and my army are out re-educating the people and we will have another vote when they are all re-educated. That's how I feel. That's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. That we're like one of these bloody dictatorships from Africa that is just like, and that might sound racist, but I don't mean to be racist, I don't mean to sound offensive, but that's what I feel. Yeah. And all across Europe, you've just got to look at what's happening. Two years ago, I sat down and I said, one of the reasons I wanted to leave the European Union is, the last thing was that...
the right wing will stomp right across Europe. Because what has happened is neoliberalism is, colla is collapsing inwards. Do you want some information on this, right? So, did you know that in the last 12 months, uh, in 94% of elections in Europe, the left wing has lost ground. Yeah, 94%, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure they right? Would. So in uh, in Italy, Matteo Salvini and the Five yeah. Star Movement got voted in. AfD in Marine, Germany. Le Pe Marine Le Pen's polling number one in France at the moment. Gert Wilders is expected to win the next election in Holland. The Sweden Democrats have gained ground in uh, Sweden. Correct. Uh, you have the AfD, as you mentioned, in Germany. 94, 6, uh, the Viktor Stein. Orban in Hungary. In fact, all of the Visegrad 4 have gone towards the uh, nationalist popul populist movement. Spain, the Vox movement has kicked off there. They just won Andalusia only a few weeks ago and they're sweeping across Spain now. Uh, Basically, in, Gr in Greece, they've got a right-wing populist movement starting to grow and gain a lot of steam now. Golden and, Dawn. And it's pretty, much, it's pretty much everywhere you look now, yeah. So, I think there's anti-EU sentiment all yeah. over the place. What has happened is, the left has fallen asleep at the wheel. Basically, the left joined the neoliberal movement and they fell asleep at the wheel. They purport to represent the working class. No, they do not. How the hell can... Jeremy Corbyn, how did he miss that one? He had it on a plane. Cameron came along, he was voting to remain, as you'd expect him to, with his, uh, his Aster Trust Fund that's robbing people of uh, um, the new houses that are being built and these dodgy leases. His little Aster Trust Fund is buying them up. The reality of it is, Corbyn could have said, as he said all his life, since he was a university student, I will stand with the working class against the neoliberal. Now, would you, would you agree that because politicians haven't done what they said they were going to do over the last 25 years, basically, uh, would you agree that, uh, that this sort of movement is growing in popularity? I think it's definitely Europe? growing in popularity. And would you, would you, would you subscribe to a, a direct democracy? I would subscribe to it, yes. You would? Yeah, I definitely subscribe to it. Because the reality of it is, as it's been proven now, I used to peck my father's head when he was still alive, God bless him, about not voting. And he, he was a coal miner, he would not, he would not vote. He said, no matter who you vote for, when they get down to that little place in London, they all do whatever they want for themselves. And this has been like a slap in the face for me. This, this has been absolutely a slap in the face. So, what, 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 what would you, uh, what would you have to say as a message about the uh, the uh, anti-Brexit campaigners that are down here in town today that we've come to speak to? My message is very simple to everybody: do not fall for the propaganda. It is propaganda, not news, from the BBC, from Sky. If it was a fair and even uh, information, if they, don't, they don't pass information anymore. So would you agree with it being the British Brainwashing Corporation? Then? It's definitely the British Brainwashing Corporation. People who voted to leave, stand fast. We are leaving. We will leave the European Union. I hope that I we are going. And the good news is, even if we don't go, there'll be nothing to stay in anywhere because the European Union is about to implode. My political opinion is that we have been totally let down by the ruling class. The elitists that live down in Westminster bubble, we this country voted to leave. Whether you like it or you do not, we voted to leave. What should have happened, rather than Cameron the coward resigning the day after, Cameron should have brought together the leaders of the main parties and said, listen, the people have spoken, and we all said, all of us said, that whatever we did was going to stand. So now we're going to form a government true. of coalition to get this country out of the European Union in a timely and orderly fashion, rather than starting a stupid two-year negotiation with a Ramona at the helm that has put this country now into a situation where we're living with no deal on the 29th of March. Yeah. It could have much it could have been dealt with much easier.